Hey gang, and welcome back to Money and Politics on what was a very news eventful day, and we're going to be covering it for you. And uh, beginning, we're going to be going through what the uh, the news from Brian Foote and George Sharp as they had an investor conference on the first day of trading after we had a reverse split. And I know that was a lot of confusion for a lot of you. Well, let's take a look at what happened, and then we'll go into some of the details of the conference call. Here is on the first day of trading, and note in the upper left, you have TSNPD. TSNPD, and that was the new symbol, and that's going to be our temporary symbol until March 26, when we go to HMBL. Um, it was up 42% today to close at $4.83 a share. And I would note that we opened the day at a adjusted price of 340. That was based on the closing price of yesterday at 85 cents. And because we did a four for one split, we went up to $3.40. And of course, everyone, some of you I know had a problem of looking at your shares and you weren't able to uh, do that. But we had a problem, or we, uh, we have a uh, a quarter of the number of shares you had before, but the price is up by four. It's pretty simple math. I ran through it before. We're going to have some sound bites. The press conference this afternoon that ran um, about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes or so. It started at four o'clock uh, central time where I'm located. And it, whatever, ran, like I say, about 40 minutes. Let's take a look. I'm going to start off with the comments by uh, George Sharp. This, I'm going to play a number of clips for you today. This um, is a comment by Sharp. It runs 48 seconds, and then we'll come back and discuss a little bit. But he talks about the reverse split, and I, I want to say up front, I edited some of this because when people, including me, of course, when you're speaking uh, off the top of your head, you sometimes put a lot of fluff in between the meat. So I tried to cut out some of that just to tighten these up a bit and to give you the hardcore information that they were talking about. So here's George Sharp. I made the conscious decision that we were not going to tell you, and I'll tell you why. It would have created mass panic. Some of you would have sold your stock, which is fine, but the problem is with a mass panic, instead of selling your stock at a dollar, 90 cents, 80 cents, 70 cents, you probably would have ended up selling, a lot of you selling it for 40 cents. So uh, I don't want to sound uh, like I'm your mother, but we, we saved a lot of you from yourselves here. The other issue is that this reverse split also forced any short positions to cover. And I think that's what you saw today, a lot of the short positions covering. And uh, we didn't want to warn those shorts that this was coming. And so there you go. Uh, he didn't want to warn this, the uh, shorts that it was coming. That was one of the reasons why uh, they didn't announce it beforehand. Now, in the uh, call, one of the there was a big announcement, and the big announcement was that Humble is buying a ticketing company that has already been in existence called Tickery. It is one of the things that I'm going to play this for you, and this is a long bite. This is the longest bite, I don't even know if a clip that I'm going to play for you, in which Brian Foote, the CEO of Humble, talks about that. Again, I've edited portions of this out just to tighten it up and to take out some of the ums and huhs and ums and, and things. He talked, which I took out, but he talked about two of the brothers that had started this, and now they are coming to work for Humble. Uh, Humble was buying or did buy the company for $20 million. But what what Brian Foote notes, uh, <laughs> Foote notes what Brian Foote says is that the, the industry, the financial arena for ticketing is $100 billion a year. So this is big news. And now this existing company that is already working in parts of South and uh, in the Latin America, I should say, I don't know specifically what country, 
is going to be working, uh, is a part of Humble. And I want you to listen to this, but I want you to be thinking, it, it, it sounds, the first time I heard it, I thought they were just talking about sporting events, but that's not the case. When you think about it, people getting on buses, people getting on subways, people getting on airports, as well as things like sports, ticketing is much more extensive when you stop to think about it uh, than we realize. And the other thing that you're going to hear, and I'm, I'm going to be saying it before foot does, but I want you to pick up on it, that they don't want people that go to some event to leave the Humble app. So you go to a football game, baseball game, whatever, you're going to be using Humble to get in. The, the tickery is going to be added to the Humble app, and that will be used to go in, buy the ticket, go in then, buy sodas, maybe, you know, whatever, buy whatever you're going to be doing. And so this really adds a potential explosion of revenue. Um, let me play this uh, app for you. Or here, I'm sorry, let me play this clip for you. It is the big announcement that came out today. So I, I didn't want to take out too much. It runs about two minutes and 24 seconds. Um, we're extremely excited to announce today um, a $20 million all, uh, stock and cash acquisition for, uh, for Tickery. Um, the pulse we are getting on the demand for uh, ticketing is incredible. Um, these guys have built in just an ironclad uh, software and ticketing platform to be able to, to do this. Um, so we'll, we'll keep the brand intact with Tickery for our Latin American and Caribbean pursuits but we'll be leaning into some of the acquired technology. Um, we're already in talk with you know, sports and stadiums and um, festivals here in the United States, in Oceania, um, in Latin America. Uh, so we're really excited to, to put this technology to work under humble ticketing or in the Latin American markets. These guys are already contracted with 5,000 organizers and venues um, around the United States. So you may have already done business with them if you're in the Latin American community. Um, and they have a foot instant footprint that Humble will be taking on in 45 states. So we think ticketing has extreme upside around things like mass transportation, but then also vertical markets, um, you know, in things like stadiums, sports, music, um, festivals, theater, comedy, uh, about a $100 billion a year opportunity. Um, we looked at the big player in ticketing and saw a massive air pocket underneath that for that $100 billion grab. Um, so we think we're going to go right at it with Humble, and we want to be able to serve this as a one-touch way um, of serving contactless venues, um, presenting your QR code at the, at the ticket entrance, paying for you know, a beer or some merchandise uh, in, inside a stadium or a festival. Um, we don't want you to have to leave Humble. Uh, we also think that as these hundreds of thousands of venues around the world need to go contactless, you saw the, the NFL Super Bowl was contactless. Um, we think every you know, stadium, venue, arena, theater, uh, museum, everything is gonna need to go contactless. And we think there's going to be one major application winner that serves that business. We don't think it's, it's economically or consumer experience wise intelligent for each venue to build their own app. Um, you know, so, so we think Humble has a great, great entry point to do that. So that's it. I want to clarify something. He is, uh, foot it, he is saying contact less. It, it, when I first heard it, I thought he was saying contact list and basically contact less. So you don't have contacts, you're not handling a bunch of things. And, uh, just wanted to clarify that. So. One of the things I meant to uh, add that was said by uh, George Sharp in his talk about, and I forgot to mention it here, some of the notes I took uh, on the split. He said, uh, you know, there was about 500 million shares held by people who were now dead, and they were just out there. You might, he, he used a different term, I'm going to call them zombie shares. Uh, they, they weren't doing anything. They weren't circulating. The other thing is he wanted to, they wanted to cut down on this large 4 billion float because so many people could go in and they could just buy like a million shares. And if the stock went up, you know, two cents, they would sell and 
make twenty thousand dollars but then they're selling a million shares and that depress the price for everyone else so for those of you who think you're getting you know screwed because they took away number of shares look at how you were getting screwed by the fact that some of these flippers as george was calling them and i think that's a fair assessment they weren't were not investing in the company they were just playing a game of numbers by buying large blocks uh, and selling them and i had talked to someone who is very familiar with the training uh, of humble and he'd been sitting there looking at it uh, for hours a day and he said you could just see this happening and especially near the end of the day where they would come in and just swoop up and grab a bunch and then flip them so that was one of the things that sharp had mentioned i just didn't want to uh, play too much video because it would it would be a half an hour show here uh, the one other thing that uh, he said uh, george said regarding this that they are creating a class of preferred shares this isn't big news for a lot of you but i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it up just so you know it exists those uh humble was a company before it merged with uh, tsnp and to get that company going there were financial investors when the company merged humble merged with tsnp uh, those people who had invested deserved to have special shares. So those people who had previously invested to get Humble up and running are going to be the preferred shareholders. Uh, those shares are going to be locked up for at least a year before they can be traded. And uh, if he said how many shares they're getting, I didn't hear it. But those shares will be locked up for at least a year. And George Sharp said, even then, he doesn't expect them to really be out there selling a bunch of these shares, which might dilute, you know, by, by releasing a bunch of uh, shares into the marketplace. He doesn't expect that to happen. And I don't think that's going to happen either. If you think that these people had enough enthusiasm to put money behind Brian Foote to get humble going as investors, why would they want to be selling at the end of just year one when they can see so much potential. So anyway, I wanted to uh, make that clear. The one last thing, which I would say uh, on, this, on the split, and this is important, they didn't want to give uh, the, those who were shorting the stock any heads up. And as you uh, saw, the stock went up today, and in that clip, as a reminder that I played of Brian Sharp before, uh, he was saying that one of the reasons that the stock went up 42% today, as you see here, was because when they split, that forced a lot of those who had been shorting the stock to cover their shorts. And so uh, we'll have to see if that that gain where we went up a dollar 43 today, which was a 42% gain from the open, uh, we'll see if there's some profit taking or not. But we don't worry about the uh, stock movement day to day. I don't, uh, or week to week. What we do want to look and see how is it progressing over six months. Think of that. Think of six month periods. And where would we be at the end of the year? It's anyone's guess. Uh, but of course, now you got to readjust. I was saying that it could have been $4 before by the end of the year. So if you, on a price adjusted basis, that would put it at $16. Uh, if it was at $10 at the end of the year, that would be the equivalent of $2.50 before the split. And so again, we're right here now at $4.83. So if we were able to go to $10 by the end of the year, you could see, of course, that would be up over 100%. And of course, if it went up by six to $16, which is kind of where I was predicting before, then that would be a triple. Now, there's one more clip I want to play for you, and uh, this is Brian Foote again, where he's talking. This is uh, about 48 seconds. Brian Foote is talking about where he sees the road ahead. So 
Quarter two will be about getting this mobile app pushed out. We're trying to pack in as many features as we can. The tech really isn't a problem for us. It's just a matter of legal, regulatory compliance, um, some, some liquidity aspects, and then how much of the blockchain we can include and not um, based on those considerations. Um, we'll have the ticketing integration very rapidly into the app and to the web platform through secondary markets. Um, and then Jeff is working like crazy on the audited financials and the doing. Um, we're actually ahead of schedule on Q3 in terms of responding to major RFPs um, from, from, in this case, a national government. We think more coming. Um, I think you'll see a lot more national governments migrating their currency into digital formats, at least a portion of it. Um, and they're going to need a mobile, you know, a mobile application with which to, to serve those customers. So. So one of the things, you know, so when you're hearing this stuff, it's hard to, or I should say it's easy to kind of miss some of the important points one i would say these guys as you can see by the fact that they have uh this two will be about getting this mobile app pushed here. out we're trying this to pack in as many features as we can and you the can tech really isn't a problem going, for us it's just a matter of legal home. regulatory number compliance one. number two um, some, some i would say what he what he brian foot just mentioned was that a number of countries are going to be going to digital currency and they're going to have to have an app and he said they're going to be going at least in part to uh digital currencies these countries that he didn't name so they're going to have to have an app for the average citizen uh brian foot also mentioned a number of times that he sees 2021 as having a hockey uh stick recovery that's something i would also endorse i've been telling people my theme for 2021 i've probably said it on other tapes I've made. My theme for 2021 is recovery. We have a world recovery coming out of the shutdown of 2020. That means oil and gas I've talked to you about before, things like DIG, which is a leveraged investment on oil and gas. Something I've not mentioned, I would say, and I'll, I'll do some other video on this, uh, ET, Edward Tom is a symbol. Uh, that is a pipeline stock. Uh, it's about $7. I don't think that's the stock that you buy because it's going to go to the moon, but it does have a great dividend. And I do see upward. So I can see where you might be able to get 50% uh, this year, conceivably, maybe go to 10. But in the meantime, you're also giving a, getting a dividend, as I recall, in the 7% uh, area. So that's something. But recovery in all of its manifestations, and I think obviously the hospitality, I'll be doing a series of videos on some of those in the weeks ahead, but talking about the conference call, what I hear is a company that knows where it's going with firm leadership of Brian Foote, George Sharp, and others. Uh, the company that just pulled off um, a merger, $20 million merger, but in a $100 billion marketplace where they could jump rapidly into that and start generating quite a lot of money that's what you want your company to do the one other thing that's kind of an uh, interesting aside and of course you have the the whole video is going to be out there i'm sure on, on youtube for you to watch if you want to see the whole thing but i thought it was interesting as an aside that uh, brian had mentioned that their sales of humble clothing were doing i believe he said something like a hundred thousand dollars a month which yeah, it sounded like he was kind of stunned at that, but it also goes to show the high level of interest in Humble. Well, folks, that's what I have for you today. It's, I think, very promising. I hope you're not upset that the fact that your stock shares went down. I had a friend, again, I followed up today because they were upset. And I said, tell your daughter that her money grew by 42% today. Today, that would be a good year. It grew up 42% today. And she responded, yeah, but we're bummed that our share prices are down. And I said, and I'm saying to you, folks, in the world of financial investing, we don't keep score by number of shares. We keep score by money. And when your money's going up, you're winning the game. It's that simple, okay? So have a great weekend. Thanks as always for watching. Thanks for all your comments. Let me know what you think. I'm pretty buzzed. I think this is great. I think it's going to be a great year ahead for Humble and for other investing. And please stay with me. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, 
Have a great weekend.